What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here, back with another video for you. Now, I've been incredibly busy all weekend. Well, I say busy, I've been pulling my absolute hair out. I want to be doing live streaming in the next few weeks. I'm building a whole new desk area for it. I've been getting everything in place. Now, the monitor was the easiest one. I knew that I wanted to get myself a new monitor. I wanted to go to 2K, I wanted to get 165 Hertz, Nano IPS. That was easy and it distracted me because then I've been gaming for a couple of weeks. This weekend, I had to do the real hard thing. So. I got myself an Elgato Camlink 4K, um, which is obviously just plug and play. But one thing that I had, because I'm using Voice Meter Potato now and we're running into OBS um, and I'm using a sound card and I've got a MIDI controller to control Voice Meter Potato because you can't get a Go XLR anywhere. I was getting all this crackle and horrible, absolutely horrible mic sounds coming through. And it turns out that basically my... Um, sound card in the settings it was set to the wrong buffer compared to everything else and i was oh, pulling my hair out but anyway anyway so obviously we're doing a test of that today i want to just sort of run this so we're shooting at 4k with an a6400 but i've downsampled it to 1080p so it means i can just crop in on the image because i'm using a 16 millimeter lens it's quite wide and as you can see i've got all this horrible background and stuff behind me so i've been messing around with like nvidia broadcast and stuff like that so yeah all of that's going to be coming up and those live streams are going to be, you know, I'm not this shouty gamer and stuff like that. It's more just so you can jump on with me and you can ask me any PC questions. We can get discussions. There's a few people I'd like to get over on the Discord. I haven't asked them yet, but there's someone that likes likes his mechanical keyboards. And I'd very much, you know, like him to, you know, come on with us and share, you know, anything for people that want to build mechanical keyboards. Because I'm dipping my toes in that at the moment. So, you know, little things like that. I'd like to get people on. If any of you want to jump on, do let me know. But anyway... You know, you've read the title of this video and I've been waffling on and we're not even talking about, you know, what's going on in this video. And apologies if I've been looking down at the screen, we'll sort of minimise that now. Should we minimise that? Because I might have been looking at the monitor the whole time for that intro. But throughout the weekend of doing all of that stuff, I've been chatting to some mates, you know, through WhatsApp conversations, privately on Discord, you know, talking to you on YouTube as well. And just it's over the last few weeks, really. And it's just about the, you know, horrific prices of GPUs. And I don't even think it's just the prices. It's the availability of them, okay? Because really, unless you're on like a stock informer Discord page, it's pretty hard to get them. Although Overclockers, if any of you are in the UK, if you go over to overclockers.co.uk and go to the 3D printer section, they seem to have all the GPUs in there, which is which is a bit odd. But it's it's a bad time for gamers. And it, and it feels like it wasn't even that long ago because I think at the end of the 10 series or sort of halfway through the 10 series GPUs and when you had the RX 480s, 580s, all of that sort of stuff. And then early Vega, there was all the mining stuff going on. So you just, you, you couldn't get a GPU. You were going to be paying way out of your arse and when you could get one a bit cheaper you were a bit worried like has it been modded has all this sort of stuff happened and then even worse around that time as well there was all the ram pricing so really we just had a little bit of a sweet spot time during rtx 3000 which wasn't a sweet spot for everyone because if you already had a decent 10 series gpu for some people 1080 ti's it, it wasn't even worth the upgrade was it so um yeah and now it's all started again, isn't it? It's all started again. You just, you can't get anything. And so I wanted to just sort of discuss about, you know, should you be overpaying for a GPU in 2021? Like, should you be overpaying? And I want to talk about all the pros and all the cons. Now, as always, you know, like I say in all these videos, this is just, you know, how I feel about it. All right. This is just, you know, what I think. I've got my head, definitely got my headphones up way too loud there so this is just my opinion we're all welcome to our own opinions and i want to know yours so let me know in the comment section so let's talk about the overprice of gpus then i think it comes down to three things really it's like a triple threat number one more than anything it's going to be that you know supply is nowhere near as good as demand right demand way outweighs supply and that is going to be because of covid i think we all know that AMD and NVIDIA haven't been able to produce as much and there's been other factors as well. So obviously AMD are making all the consoles and they've got all the demand there. Um, and NVIDIA and Samsung, you know, Samsung's yields haven't been as good as NVIDIA wanted. So with all of that, you know, that's been hard to get. Now on top of that, you've then got the people that want to capitalize off of that um, and just basically be cruel really, you know, scalpers. I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying not to swear anymore so, you know, I can get good YouTube ads, but Let's just say, you know, we all know about scalpers. We all know what sort of dirty people they are. And we've got no respect for scalpers. But then at the same time, like I said to you, like I, I also get if you just want to buy one GPU to flip it over, even though that's sort of part of the problem. 
you know, I, I would have done the same. You know, if I could have got two 38s, I probably would have sold one. But then I've got friends that would have wanted one. So I'd have been like, you know, buy me a takeaway and you and give me the cash for it and you can have it. But, you know, I get that. You know, I get that side of it. So you've got the scalpers. And then on top of that, we're back to that sort of what was going on with the 10 series graphics cards, weren't we? And with the RX 580s and all of that stuff and all the Vega cards being gone. Mining's through the roof again. So now we've got all the people that are using the software that are using it to scalp and now using the software so they can build big mining farms, which basically means us gamers are absolutely screwed. And the worst thing is as well, it's that it's not even just the inflated eBay prices now. If you see most graphics cards, even when they come up on stock in format, they are marked up between 150 and 250 pounds. It's the same on eBay. I mean, it's even to the point now I'm seeing 37Es at retailers for the same price as I'm seeing them on eBay, okay? And you, again, you could say that those companies, that's wrong of them. They should be selling it for the cost price. And I totally agree with you on that. But I've always said that, you know, stores, let's say Scan, eBuy, I'm just talking about in the UK, Overclockers, you know, you've got Newegg Micro Center in America and all of that sort of stuff. And, you know, they're not your friend. They never have been. They're a business and they've got to make money. So if you would normally be having 5,000 graphics cards to sell, at a price which would still fly off the shelves at retail price you sell them but then if you've only got 500 and there is that still same demand that wants the 5000 that flies off the shelf you have to put the price up because you're making less money on a core product that you sell okay so i don't agree with it and i think overclockers in the uk are the most shadiest i know i talk about that with, with my mate trevor quite a bit they're definitely the most shadiest for the price increases but um yeah you're going to be overpaying so like I said, it's a triple threat on why you can't get a GPU, okay? It's an absolute triple threat. Those are the three main factors. But it's also sort of a triple threat. Is there's, there's three factors I think it comes down to on should you be overpaying for a GPU in 2021. And I want to talk about sort of the three, possibly actually there might even be four. Um, I like to waffle the, the cases on why you should and why you shouldn't. So the first one, again, it comes down to COVID for me. So COVID's affected us all in different ways, okay? You know, I've got I've got friends that have done really well for it, that have made lots of money. Maybe they've adapted their business. But then I've got other friends that haven't. They run a restaurant, they run a pub. Do you know what I mean? They've had all of this. They've had to, you know, tighten their belts and really think financially. But for the people that haven't, you know, I am someone that's lucky. I haven't been affected. And I think I'm even lucky with saying all of this because, you know, I don't know if I said that at the beginning. I've got the 3060 Ti for price. I've got the 5600 X, XT, um, X, 5600X CPU for price. You know, I'm lucky. So I am I am in that sense. And, it, and if you haven't been lucky, you know, if you need to chat, you want to get over on the Discord, you want to play some games, let me know. I'm here. I'm always there. You know, we'll listen. We'll, we'll chat some shit like we're doing right now. But if you have done well for it, you know, it's the same for me. I haven't been on holidays. I haven't been been to visit my mum. Do you know what I mean? You know, I haven't took Jenna and the kids away down there. I don't drive. So that would have been a train trip. Um, there's all the money we'd spend down there. So, you know, I don't have a car either. So I'm not maintaining those costs. And even if you have got a car, it's probably been parked on your drive. So you might end up having quite a bit of money sat around and you might have money left over. And it was funny because one of my mates asked me, he said, was a 6,800, um, non-XT, was a 6,800 for 720 pounds too expensive? And I sort of said it to him. I was like, well, yes and no. The only reason for me I was saying yes is because even though they're fantastic GPUs, the 6,800 and 6,800 XT, for me, I would still pick NVIDIA over them. And that is because of things that we're using today. Like I'm using the HVENC encoder to record um dlss obviously we haven't seen amd's version of it yet but because of that it's also better in ray tracing it's also much faster in adobe premiere as well so for all of those extra use cases for me that's why i would still pick it but then i you know i said to him i said you know actually that gpu it's only it's supposed to be 550 pounds retail okay so it's supposed to be 55 uh, 55 uh, 550 pounds retail it was actually a custom model as well. It wasn't the reference model. So we know those are always 50 to 100 pounds more. This one was just a pulse. So it's sort of like 50 pounds more. Um, so that takes us up to 600, 120 pounds. So that actually wasn't marked up that much. It's just a GPU that I wouldn't buy. But um, yeah, if you want to see those prices, funny enough, I said overclockers are the scamming, but they seem to be the cheapest on a 6800. And I said to him, you know, I just think it's too much money. And, and he literally just came back to me. He's like, yeah, but it's COVID on board. I've literally got nothing to do. I've literally got nothing to do. And I totally understand that. You know, I totally get that. You need to make sure that OBS is still recording. There's a lot of trust going on here compared to just playing, pressing record on my camera. 
Ah, I could have pressed record on my camera. No, I can't press record on my camera because I don't get face tracking in 4K. So we just have to output. Just have to output. So that's the first one, you know. You know, you, you might have a load of money sat around, okay? You might just have the money sat there. You are literally bored out of your skull, all right? So that's the first use case, which then takes us into the second one, really, because GPUs are worth more money at the moment. I got £240 for my GTX 1650 Super. When I bought my um, 3060 Ti, okay, I literally thought that I was probably going to get about £100, £120 for my 1650 Super. I probably would have sold it locally rather than putting it on eBay because then I haven't got the fees and the shipping. So I thought someone might have me down for 100 and I probably would have took it because I'd used the card a lot on the channel. It's pretty much paid itself back off anyway. But yeah, I got 200 was it 220 I think it was 240 but it was 220 after all my fees and shipping, especially if you wait for £1 selling fees on eBay. And this is the same thing as well for my friend because he's got a 5700 XT, 5700 XT. I'm getting really confused with all these numbers. So that graphics card's going for like 450, 550 pounds on eBay at the moment. So he's only actually paying a couple of hundred pounds to upgrade. And so that is the thing, even though GPUs are marked up 100 to 250 pounds, if you're lucky enough to already have an older gen generation GPU that's marked up 150 to 250 pounds, the upgrade technically isn't actually costing you any more. It's not costing you any more money. In fact, when I think about it, I sold my 2060 just before the 3080 came out and got £240 for it. Let me have a look on eBay and see how much I'd get for a 2060 right now. They're going between sort of 300 and 400, 360. So I screwed up there. I should have held out. I should have played the long game. Do you see what I mean? I completely messed up there. I could have pretty much paid for my 3060 Ti, I got that for 420. It pretty much would have paid for it, but I still got some good money back on the 1650 Super. So like I was saying there, you know, if you've got, you know, a, a GPU, even back to the 10 series, 1060s are going for over 200 pounds. Then even if you're paying 500, 550 for a 3060 Ti, it's, it's gonna work out about the same difference as if you'd sold your 1060 for 140 pounds, 120 pounds six months ago, okay? So that's use case number two. That's a big one, actually. I think that's a big reason on why you should overpay. But then there's the third reason. There's my reason why I don't think you should overpay. And that is because, let me minimize OBS again, because I'm looking here. And that is because I'm just this sort of, I'm a bit of a stubborn guy. Do you know what I mean? I even, you know, even when I was trying to buy the, uh, there was, I did the video where I was trying to buy the RTX 3070 and I couldn't get one. And I was refusing to pay 75 pounds more than it was supposed to be. In hindsight, I probably should have done that. But that's just me. I don't want to overpay, especially a retailer when I know, you know, they've probably got a nice bit of stock because there were a lot of stock of 3070s on day one. I just couldn't get through and get one. Um, and I do know people that did manage to get the reference one for 450. So you lucky boys, eh? You lucky people who managed to get that graphics card. But um, yeah, I just, I just don't like to massively overpay. It was the same even with the Ryzen 5600. I could have got it like a month before, but I wasn't going to pay like 350, 370 for a six core 12 thread CPU. I managed to get it for 280 pounds on PC World. That's something I'm happier with. I didn't even want to pay 280 for it. In fact, I wanted to wait for just the standard 5600 to come out and probably get it for just over 200. But I don't know when that um, CPU is going to come out. But that's just sort of me. I don't like to overpay. So, so I sort of took a slightly different approach to this. So when I couldn't get my 3080 and I had the cash nurse app for my 2060 and I had some extra cash over as well. And I sort of knew it was probably going to be the same with the 3070. I went out and bought some new audio gear. Okay. I bought some extra stuff for the channel. Okay. When I couldn't get the 3070, I sold my camera and bought my new one. Okay, I didn't actually really lose any money because I had quite a nice Panasonic camera and a lot of lenses anyway. I just wanted to switch over to Sony, but it just allowed me to have some money to sort of sort it out and get a camera within a week. Because you don't sell something on eBay for a thousand pounds, right? And spend the money the next day after you get it. You make sure those people are happy. That's another thing as well with doing the graphics card swap, actually, that you should be um, you know, wary of. You don't just want to sell your GPU, see one on stock informer the next day and buy it. Because if there's any problems, and you haven't got the cash, eBay's going to take that money straight from you because they always side with the person that's bought it off you. All right, that's definitely something you want to be thinking about. But that's what I did. You know, I sort of bought some new things, all right? I sort of thought, okay, I haven't got the money now. I do not want to overpay a couple of hundred pounds. I would rather use that money to get other things. 
And that's the thing that I could say to you, okay? So if you don't wanna sell your GPU, if you're not someone that uses eBay, and maybe you don't wanna sell it on Facebook Marketplace inflated and get loads of abuse because you're apparently scalping, but actually you're just selling it for the same price that everyone else is at the moment. So it's not really your fault. Um, but if you didn't want to do any of that, if you didn't want the risk of someone else, you know, complaining or even because if they break it, if they, you know, graphics card swaps are easy, but if they break it, they can still say that you sent them a faulty one. OK, so there's a lot of money lost there. So if you didn't want to do that, or maybe even if you plan to put that GPU in another system, if you're still gaming, if your modern GPU can still run most of your games on the monitor and the refresh you've got pretty fine, you know, I'd stick with it. All right. I would stick with it. Like we're moving into next gen with games, but it's not going to go, you know, there's not some super demanding next gen, next gen games yet. OK, I know Cyberpunk's demanding. I know Flight Simulator and stuff like that, but it's still one or two years away. Like if you've got a 2060, it's still going to be decent for 1080p and 1440p gaming. Like a 1060 and a 58 is still decent for 1080p gaming. You just have to mix your settings up a bit. All right. We're not when we haven't quite done that jump yet. All right especially again with COVID, with game developers, with games not coming out, there was hardly any launch titles on the consoles. There isn't anything that you couldn't run, really, if you've got a sort of mid-range PC and up. So that's why I would say to you, if you don't want to overpay and you're that sort of stubbornness on me, think about other things that you could spend the money on, okay? All right, I don't want to over... I could buy the GPU now, but I don't want to overpay £200. Fine, don't buy the GPU now, but if you've got the £200, buy yourself a new motherboard. Buy yourself an SSD, get yourself some other things that you can put in your computer and hopefully in six months times, GPU prices will be back down to normal. So then you'd end up with a ball in GPU and a super fast PCIe SSD. You might even decide you want to do a motherboard upgrade, right? That was actually one of the, that was what, that was the computer thing I did. That was another thing we managed to upgrade because I didn't buy a new GPU. I went from the X470 motherboard to a B550 motherboard. Haven't got any Gen 4 SSDs yet, but it's there. It's ready for it. Okay. My next GPU I want is a 3060. If I can't get a 3060 for retail, I'm sticking a ball in SSD in it. That's what I'm going to do. But yeah, there's the big waffle on whether you should or should not overpay for a GPU in 2021. Now, I think the one that I would say is most suitable for all of you is if you're happy to sell your GPU, just do it. Don't game for a couple of weeks. Make sure that transaction's gone solid. You would have made yourself an extra couple of hundred pounds than you normally would have. You've got your money to cover for your new GPU. Or if you're stubborn like me, just spend your money on something else. Don't worry about it. Enjoy the system that you've got. Just play the games that you've got. It's going to be six months. Hopefully, let's just ride it all out together. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section there. Unstructured waffle video. Probably gone on for ages. Make sure you subscribe and I'm going to be back with some lots of streaming videos and cam linky stuff over the next few weeks.